a good friend of ours named Ron. You guys have seen him on the channel multiple times. He lives in Pensacola. Cameraman Ron is in the hospital right now in ICU and on a ventilator, not doing good. Charlie, what are you doing? Oh, good jump, man. <laughs> if the garage is too small and the merch building's not complete, that only leaves one option. Well, what's up guys? It's Daniel from Arms Family Homestead and welcome to uh, very confusing Oklahoma weather. A couple days ago, it was 85 degrees. Last weekend, we were deer hunting, and it was hot. It was way too hot to deer hunt. We did it anyways. Now, it's in the 30s. And, uh, you know, we had this thing called summer that lasted for, I don't know, three years, I think. It felt like 105 degrees for infinity and beyond, you know. Then, then you come out of summer, and you're supposed to go to fall. And that's when the leaves turn and get real pretty. You know, when we were deer hunting back the last weekend during the youth rifle season at Mill Creek, the leaves were real pretty. Well, they're still, the oak trees are still nice and green here. Well, tonight it's going to get down into the 30s. But in two days, the low is 20. 20 degrees. That's not fall. That's winter. Winter is coming. How do we go from 85, 90 almost last weekend um, to 9, 10 days later, it's going to be 20 degrees. So I'm going to say if we hit 20 degrees, all these green leaves on the trees are just going to fall off in like two days and we're not going to have fall. No, you know, long, beautiful fall. Oklahoma weather's confusing. I think Oklahoma's Oklahoma's weather is confused. We just skip fall. A lot of years, we just completely skip fall. It's like the most pretty, awesome, beautiful season of the year. We just skip it. We go from 105 to 5. But anyways, so it's been raining. That's good news, right? I'm not complaining a bit. I'm in, I, I love this weather right now. It's in, like I said, high 30s, and it's beautiful. I love it. My wife has been miserable, but... I need to prepare everybody. I need to prepare all the animals for what's coming. So I think what I'll do, um, I want to get the donkeys and alpacas up here closer to the barn. Because if we're going to have temperatures in the 20s, I like to have everybody close together. The tricky part is, got to keep RJ separate from, you know, Lucy and Tina. And you got to keep RJ separate from Jerry. So I've already put Jerry and Steve and uh, a couple animals on the other side of the barn. I moved RJ into this pen. He was up here yesterday, so I just moved him in behind the barn. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and move the goats into the pen behind the barn so that I can rotate the donkeys over here. And then everybody will be close together. And the eventual goal though is gonna be to switch them. I kind of, I really don't want the donkeys and the alpacas to stay on this pasture too long because they're rough on grass. I'm not gonna lie and that wheat is really getting started growing. So there's a round bale in both pens. There's a little bit of wheat out here. I planted all the wheat in the pasture where the donkeys are right now, but uh, that's not gonna grow very much very fast. It has sprouted, I'll show it to you in a little bit. But anyways, we'll see if I can get the goats attention and get them to come from here over to this pen where we got a wet RJ and a wet Charlie. <laughs> The goats don't like the rain. They don't like the mud. So it's going to be a interesting process. But I think if I get a feed bucket, they'll follow me. Hey, goats. Come on, goats. I got something for you. You got to come out of the barn. <laughs> goats are funny they do not like water or mud or rain or anything that gets them wet at all in any way charlie charlie don't mind he likes to sit in the mud you weirdo okay okay hang on hang on let me tie the gates together i don't think this is going to be difficult come on goats come on goats would you hush you birds are noisy. Come on, goats. 
Come on, copper. Come on. Let's go. Charlie, what are you doing? Oh, good jump, man. <laughs> I think Charlie's liking the cool weather. Don't hurt yourself, buddy. And please don't go out that gate like RJ just did. Look at him go. Or her, I really don't know still. Come on, Charlie, come back. Coming in hot. <laughs> I haven't seen Charlie do this in a couple weeks. He hasn't really got too excited he, he did a little while that day i was planting that wheat seed but charlie's feeling good and rj came back you've been rolling in the mud haven't you you dirty uh -uh. Uh -uh. don't do that why don't you go chase charlie you guys notice he has a specific pattern he's going to come back by here he's going to come over here and go to my left oh he went around Ooh, you about stepped in the water. Usually it comes this way first, but you're gonna go up there, go around the tree. All right, ready, go. How fast can you go, Charlie? All right, okay, yep, gotta make this lap through the mud. Here we go. Back by the water trough. Oh, went a little different that time. Okay, have fun, buddy. <laughs> Charlie's having fun. <laughs> I got to uh, shut these gates, get a little bit more feed, and then I'm gonna go back here and see if I can get the donkeys to transfer over into this pasture. And uh, that way everybody's close, close to the barn. What are you doing? You're standing in the mud. See ya. Look at that. We've had enough rain to actually have standing water in the pasture. I like it. We were bone dry. So, all of our winter pasture and food plots and stuff has got a good drink. Let's see if these girls will follow me over here and uh, if I can get them to come through, I'll shut the gate behind them and then probably leave this pasture closed off for a while. What do you think, Tina? You want to come up closer to the barn? No? Not interested in talking? I got some food for you. Anyways, I uh, since I put out 300 pounds of wheat seed, um, we'll go over and take a look at it in just a minute. Uh, if I can get these girls to transfer pastures real quick. It's all germinating and doing really well, considering it was just broadcast and not actually plant it into the ground not you know i didn't use the cedar or anything back up girls back up come on in hey phoebe come on everybody through the gate including brie you got to go around the gate little girl i know this is your first time in your life ever having to walk through a gate but uh this way sister mom didn't teach you very well did oh here you go come on around Good girl. Look at y'all. Now packers are going to check it out. Hey, I'll feed you in a minute. Back up, back up, Phoebe. You don't need over here right now. Give me just a minute. I'll come feed you. Okay, let's see. I, I don't know how well it'll show up on camera. I, I can get close, but you guys, this wheat is just popping up everywhere. I know, I know there's a lot of bare ground here but there's areas where there is still a lot of grass and as you go up the hill there's a lot of grass and back into the timber here there's quite a bit this was a, a huge brush pile that i it took me several months to burn and uh you know I, that grass has never really come back there but anyways check this out 
So you can see all the wheat on the surface. Now, I don't know how it's gonna handle 20 degrees, but it's all sprouting and coming up. So we'll see, but as you can tell, it's getting a really good germination. And uh, you know, it would've been nice if we'd have had like a month and a half or two of fall with those 50s, 50s and 60s, maybe some nights in the 40s. Uh, 20 degrees is probably really gonna hurt those seedlings that are sitting on top of the ground, have one little small root going down and one little green shoot coming up. But wheat is very cold hardy once it's established. I just don't think, I don't know. I don't know if we've had it in the ground long enough for it to get established. Okay, next thing. Um, my hands are freezing, by the way. <laughs> when you're used to 80, 90, 105, 112 degrees, 37, 38 feels really cold. And with a 15 mile an hour north wind, it's even worse. But uh, do you remember a few weeks ago I showed you we had that wind storm that come through and knocked down a bunch of limbs and stuff? And this tree was one that I told you was an issue right next to the fence and I was afraid that limb was gonna twist and fall on the fence. So it was busted off way up in the treetop and I heard something crash the other day a couple days ago and uh, luckily it fell out into the field and not on the fence. So <sighs> just another mess to clean up. Some brush down here, some brush down over there, some limbs down there. But look at this, glorious rain. I bet we've had the last couple days, it's probably two and a half inches of rain. So um, 20 degrees is really gonna slow our winter pasture growth down. But I bet you within four or five days after this little cold front, we'll be back up into 50s and 60s and get the sun to pop out for a few days and this stuff's going to explode. Look at the donkeys. Y'all go easy on my pasture now. Don't be grazing it to the dirt. Uh-huh. I know how you girls are. You like to graze it short. Well, Farah, it's starting to rain. And uh, these girls have got a lot better shelter instead of just being under a porta hut in this cold, rainy, nasty weather. And uh, they'll do just fine in here. Although, like I said, I don't really want to leave them in here long term because they'll graze that wheat down in just a matter of days. So what I'll probably end up doing is putting the goats back in here and running the donkey girls over into this pasture where Charlie's at. And uh, no, I still haven't finished the whole purpose of uh, building the barn the way I built it here, the shed. I'm supposed to have a door across here and no fence right there so that we can access it from both sides. Charlie, it's raining. Did you know that? It's a cold rain, ain't it? Hey, don't you be trying to eat my ring. I know what you're after. So, yeah. It's raining. I don't know if you guys can see it on camera or not, but I'm gonna finish my chores real quick. And then uh, I think DJ and I, maybe Houston are gonna run over to the merch building and do some cleaning over there, Charlie. Did you know that? You're shaking. Are you shivering? Are you cold? We gotta go do some cleaning over there. Ouch, that's my finger. Why'd you bite my finger? Ouch. Okay, that's enough. So we've got to run over to the merch building and do some cleaning because the guys that are going to be working on our floors and making the floors look nice and pretty are going to be there in a couple days. Okay? I know you care. What are you doing, Turkey? Standing out in the rain? Well, what a crummy day. <laughs> it's amazing. I love it. It's uh, 37, 38, 39-ish degrees windy and rainy and only gonna get colder but that's okay um need some gravel obviously we're at the merch place need some gravel in the parking area tried to get some of that uh i've got a buddy that runs a 10 wheeler that hauls rock for me and his truck was in the shop and it's really too muddy anyway so uh if you if you pull up to the merch place which you shouldn't be uh you're gonna get stuck i'm not i'm in a four-wheel drive pickup but anyways we it's getting pretty rough right here but anyway Anyways, DJ and Houston and I 
decided to come over here and do some cleanup. We've got to get the floors all cleaned up because we've got a guy coming uh, in a couple days to do the floors for us. We're not going to be putting tile or anything fancy in uh, the living area. The Actually, the entire building, the shop, all the way across the apartment, we're just going to be doing like a, not even a stained seal, not a stain on the concrete, but like a high gloss wax finish. Maybe like a medium gloss, maybe not high gloss, I don't know. We'll see how it turns out, but we're not gonna stain them. We're just gonna seal them and make them like a slick, smooth finish. And uh, we've got some friends that did that in one of their barn door buildings and it turned out really well, so we'll see. But it's nice and toasty in here. We don't have any heat yet. It's 39 degrees outside. It's probably 65 in here. So no electricity still. I just brought a battery, you know, a little solar generator over here to plug in a light so we can see in the shop to work because I don't want to open the doors. If we open up all the doors, it lights up, but yeah, making progress. Gotta get some cleanup done. What are you throwing trash on the floor for, boy? Supposed to be picking up trash. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Mom's sweeping the kitchen. That's what she's good at, right? No. Heads or tails? Heads, Heads or tails? Heads. Tails. Heads I win, tails you lose? Yeah. Heads. You missed the trash pile. You're doing a good job. All right, got all the trash picked up, everything cleaned up. Floors aren't spotless, but uh, they'll have to do some prep work before they start sealing the floors. We did get tub shower combo, obviously not installed, but we just set it in here. That's where it'll go. Toilet next to it, vanity, bedroom, basically matching bedrooms and closets on either side of that bathroom. So shop is uh, dark because we don't have the garage doors open right now, the big doors, but cleaned up as best we can. Gotta let the electricians come in tomorrow, get all their stuff out of the way. I can't even see, you're like a dark shadow. I'm Santa Claus. Their lift is in the way. We gotta get it out of here, all their extra conduit. Then, and then the floors. The floors. The floors are gonna look good. Yep. Um, They've got most all, I would say the electrical is what, 90% roughed in? Yeah. You know, we don't have all the wires pulled through the conduits and everything, but as far as the rough in, the shop needs wire pulled through all the conduit, but the living side and the laundry and all that stuff is pretty well done. Yeah? Yeah. Floors, central heat and air. Sheet rock. Electricity. Yes. Electricity is a problem. Yes. Get it in the truck. Get the trash in the truck. Oh, goodness. There you go. Oh, good job. So we were really, 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 really. It's like when Houston talks about a big deer, you know, big, 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 big. We were really, 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 really hoping to be able to use this building for the Christmas launch. Our Christmas merch launch is coming up planned November 17th, right? That's still your date? It's still my If I can't move her up closer... <laughs> I want to go. I want to go sooner. Anyways, the problem is the power company won't come out and turn on the power. We were hoping to have at least temporary service set up so that we could have one or two plugs going. We could work out of the shop side as soon as the floors are done in there and have a couple plug-ins. We could start hauling stuff over here and use the shop, not the apartment side, but the shop, because it's what ninety percent complete. Yeah. Problem is, is the power company. So we, we have, just you can see there's a pole, an electric pole right here with a transformer and a wire that comes across to a what really was probably a temporary pole at one time with a meter on it. Because there used to be a house sitting right here. And when we bought the property, we called the power company and said we need to transfer the power into our name and have it shut off. And what'd they tell us? Oh, don't do that. Yeah. Don't put it in your name. 
you don't know how long it's going to be before you need service, so just wait until you need service, then put it in your name. So as soon as our electrician got the meter base installed on the back of the building, we called the power company. And they said, great, we'll send the engineer out November 20th. Yeah. It's fun. So, I mean, realistically, the only thing the power company has to do is bring a wire off of their transformer down the pole and trench it to the back of the building where there is already a meter base. But we're not going to have electricity for who knows how long because if they show up on November 20th to do the, the engineer to come look at it, that doesn't even mean the construction company is going to get the orders. No. And then we're on the construction company's waiting list. It could be after the first year before we have electricity in the building. That stinks. We hope not. All so right. if you want to know what we're going to do with all the merch... You'll have to come see it on my channel. <laughs> because we don't have an answer yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, our garage is stacked full of stuff right now, and we're expecting 32 more cases of shirts what? and hoodies tomorrow, and we still don't have the pecans yet. Yes. And we're getting like... And cups. Thousands yeah. of pounds of pecans. There's so not in yet. our garage looks like it's just a storage unit stacked full of boxes. <laughs> we have a problem. Alrighty, well, it's uh, the next day, and it is uh, colder and windier. I'm kind of using the garage as a wind block right now, but it's, uh, it's going to get really cold. However, this whole merch situation, <laughs> our, uh, our online business has, has grown and expanded faster than we have. So we're at a dilemma because the merchandise facility is not quite ready to go and the garage is too small well let me show you okay so this has always been enough space in the past but we're at a point where we're having to buy such a large quantity of stuff that uh we're out of space so this is a large portion of our christmas launch stuff now dj will typically show you guys everything kind of show you go over show you what all we have for you guys but uh there's so much here and a lot of these spaces are still you know we still have other things in stock and nowhere really to condense enough to fit all of this plus hang on plus i i got an email let me rephrase that. I got an inbox full of emails this morning saying we are expecting 32 more boxes today. And I don't mean 32 boxes like this. I mean 32 more big cases of shirts and hoodies and jackets and stuff. And I'm not complaining, um, but we're out of space. So when those 32 boxes get here, they would have to go right here because that's about the only place left. Which leaves us no space to unpack and actually have a, you know, inventory workspace where we can go and pull stuff. So, with the merch building, as you see, is not ready to go yet. The power company is dragging their feet and there's just nothing we can do about that. They're busy. I get it. We don't have septic or water hooked up over there. So, I could take, you know, I could have him put a wire in, a, a, a generator plug in into the wall and wire it up like a you know a backup system for a generator take my big welder over there if i can get it back from dusty plug it in turn power on and we'd be good we don't have heat and air yet over there so it's it's just not ready the merch building is just not ready for the christmas launch which is very disappointing because i've been hoping all year that we would be done at least with the shop side be in there so that we could have all of this stuff for the new building because this isn't going to work so if the garage is too small and the merch building isn't complete isn't even ready to where we could use it to launch out of uh, i think our christmas launch date our planned launch date is november 17th that's when djs want to do all this oh and i forgot to mention we've got uh a couple thousand pounds maybe more than that of uh packaged pecans coming the pecan deal is going it is a go it's 100 percent a go they're 
supposed to take the the pecans that they've harvested harvested so far to the processor and they're hoping we can have them bagged and ready sometime around the 10th of november no, no nothing before then so somewhere 10th 11th 12th of november we should have pecans in hand so we're just going to wait until that november 17th date to launch everything at once so back to the merch thing if the garage is too small and the merch building's not complete that only leaves one option I'm gonna have to give up my shop come on in Earl I know you want to and Gemma so since we are incredibly limited on space in the garage we're gonna have to bring everything down here and set up shop at least temporarily in here I think um, DJ's not real big on that idea I do have heat in here we, we can heat the space we got electricity the internet's iffy because we're so far from the house so I'm gonna have to figure out a Wi-Fi extender because if I can't get her internet in here there's no way we can do it we'll figure the internet part out but basically what we're gonna do I think is probably just push everything to the edges and stack as much as I can on my pallet racks um, Houston's Houston's tortoises are in here while it's cold for the winter time we have to bring them in obviously the side by side can go outside I can hide tuck the lawnmower back in a corner and yeah I think this is our only option so hopefully i don't need <laughs> a workshop to do much work in over the next month or so but uh, i'm gonna get this picked up and cleaned up and probably move dj's merch business down here for a little while our merch business she runs it but it's our business so before i get uh, too deep in cleaning up out here i want to talk to you guys about a couple things and uh, first off i made a post on facebook on our facebook page uh, basically asking for prayers for a good friend of ours, uh, a good buddy of ours, huh, Earl, you, you, you're buddies with him, a good friend of ours named Ron. You guys have seen him on the channel multiple times. He lives in Pensacola. Cameraman Ron is in the hospital right now in ICU and on a ventilator, not doing good. Um, I don't know all the details and it's really not my place to share all the details, but basically something to do with his kidneys and his pancreas. They're having to do dialysis is like he had a gallstones and all kinds of problems and his pancreas was giving him fits which caused to issues with his kidneys like i said i don't know all the details but i made a post on facebook about it and guys ron really needs our prayers ron is uh he's a tough guy he's he's gonna pull through i i, I don't have a doubt but uh they're keeping him heavily sedated and he's on a ventilator in icu so it can't be good so dj's been talking to sarah his wife off and on and trying to get updates i don't know i'm not going to be able to keep you guys minute to minute updated but ron's a really good friend of ours and we would really appreciate it go over support him cameraman ron on youtube facebook um and prayers are just that's all we can do right now honestly which kind of leads me into something i've, I've kind of wanted to talk to you guys about in in that you know, we, we've always been open and honest and shared our, our faith on our, on our channel. My wife talks about, you know, she goes into different scriptures and things and has different chats on her channel. We've always been open and honest about our faith. But I, I, don't, want it, I don't want anybody to get confused, okay? I'm not a preacher by any means. I'm just a regular dude sitting here petting my dog in my shop. But I, I know that, that we're all called to be a light in a dark world. And we live in a dark world right now. And I get hundreds of good, amazing, great comments from people that say things like, you're, you're just an amazing dad. I'm so jealous of, of how, you know, how good your kids have it with having you as a dad. And you're just a great person. You're a great guy. And I, and I appreciate that. I honestly really do. But I don't want you guys to forget. I want you guys to miss the message. Earl, you're missing the message here, buddy. You're making me miss the message. What I'm trying to say is, it's not me, guys. It's not me. I'm not a perfect person. I, I do my best to be as good of a human as I can. But when you see something that you see in me that makes you think I'm just a great dad or have a great quality, just remember, guys, I'm nobody without Christ. Jesus is the reason 
I want, I've never wanted to be that guy that had a, a platform, a big social media platform with a lot of followers that is basically a, a feel good preacher. I am not a preacher at all. I don't, I don't have a ton of scriptures memorized. I don't have near as many memorized as I should, I can promise you. But I want to use this platform to share the light, the love of Christ. Jesus came to this earth. God's God in the flesh. Because with such a dark, sinful world. And don't don't think it's me. I don't want I don't it's the praise does not go to me. The glory does not go to me. If you see something on my channel and it makes you feel good and you think he is a great guy, just just remember the glory goes to God. The glory belongs to the Father in heaven. And it's not me. I'm an imperfect person. But I do not want to be that guy that gets the big head because of great comments over, you know, years of things. You guys see a small portion, not just me, but everybody that's doing this stuff online. You guys see a small portion of our life. And nobody, I'm not going to say nobody, but most reasonable people are not going to put the bad times out there. They're not going to put the, the times they mess up out there. You guys are seeing 20, 30 minutes, two or three times a week of a highlight reel of the good things. Not just my channel, but everyone's. But I want you to remember, if, if, you, if you're just watching me and you're like, man, man, he's a good dad. Just remember, we all have a good dad. We all have a father in heaven. And the glory goes to him. We wouldn't be where we are. I wouldn't be where I'm at. We wouldn't have the things we have. We wouldn't do the things we get to do if it wasn't for the blessings from God. And I truly believe that. And right now, Ron is in a, in a bad health situation where he needs you guys praying for him. Prayer, I have no doubt, helps. If we can get, listen, think about it. If one or two people are praying, that's amazing. That's great. If you got one or two people praying for you, God hears it all. I don't doubt that for a second. Let's put 100,000 people rattling the walls of heaven praying for somebody. That, that's got power. And I believe that. And I don't want to cry because I'm a soft, emotional guy. But it's amazing. And I, I'm blessed beyond measure. But I do not want anyone to ever get confused and think that I did something on my own to get where I'm at. That's not the case. So thank the Lord for all of his blessings in your life. Thank the Lord for all the blessings that he's going to bring to your life. And if you're not a Christian, that's, that's okay. It's not too late. That's the thing. Jesus came to this earth and never called himself a Christian. Think about that. Christians is a term that people made up. A lot of people say, I don't go to church because that building's full of hypocrites. Well, I promise you that church has room for one more. There's room for one more. Try it out. Trust me. Don't put your faith in people. Don't put your hope in people. Don't put your hope in our country's leaders for heaven's sake, because they're not doing a very good job. Just remember, you were wonderfully and perfectly created by God who created this earth, created the world, created white-tailed deer that we can go out and hunt and chase for food and all the things. You were created in his image. And I believe that. It just dawned on me. Today's the perfect day to burn my... Uh, scrap pile, my trash pile, down, not trash. Don't think I'm throwing away a bunch of trash. Maybe some cardboard, but uh, old limbs and lumber and old pallets that I got in on shipments of things that, that weren't worth saving. So it's been raining for the last three days or four days nonstop. So I'm going to set this on fire, let it be burning while I'm home doing some chores here today.
Well, I made it back to the barn. I'm fixing to start cleaning after I got my fire going and uh, just pulled up my camera at the gate at the end of the driveway and the UPS guy just dropped off all of our packages. So I'm not sure if I should hook a trailer up and just take a trailer. I just really don't think I can get them all in the back of a pickup. So that's probably what I'm going to do is hook up a trailer. I just back up there with the pickup truck so that I have the trailer and the truck to load all these packages because they're supposed to be like 30 something boxes. Uh, that's excessive. I'm glad we were home and it wasn't raining. Could you imagine if it had been pouring like it was yesterday? Oh no, that would suck. I'm glad it's not three o'clock either. <laughs> Uh -huh. Yeah, there's been a couple times we've uh, pulled out the gate and like, we got to go. We got to go right now. And then this is what we find. Yeah. Not today. Not today. I really hope you all don't boycott us and decide not to buy anything this Christmas because it'd be like the worst Christmas ever for our family if you did that. <laughs> mm. some stuff well i mean i'm, I'm only kind of kidding like if you guys don't buy anything this year for christmas <laughs> we're gonna have a lot a lot of t-shirts hoodies jackets blankets coffee cups mugs all the things and uh i don't know what i'm gonna do with it all earl tell everybody don't forget don't forget to buy some stuff because they asked for it, right? <laughs> Why do you look so scared? You think I'm getting on to you for hanging out the window? And uh, while I am joking, I'm only sort of joking because I don't think you guys realize the amount of inventory we're purchasing for Christmas for our Christmas launch this year. Um, I don't think I realize the amount of inventory we purchased for this. Uh, there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Last year, when we did our Christmas launch, we went live on Facebook and YouTube and did over a thousand orders. We had over a thousand orders come in in the first hour on a live stream. And uh, this year we've added a few extra things plus the pecans. I think the pecans are gonna be a huge seller. Everyone seems to be really interested in that. So if you buy a bag of pecans, buy a t-shirt and a hat, <laughs> I'd appreciate it. <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. I'm kidding, but I'm serious. Um, running an online business is a home business online with just us is you know when we were buying two or three hundred shirts 400 shirts for a launch not that big a deal not that big. when you buy two or three or four thousand shirts and hoodies and jackets and it's a little stressful it is. it's a little stressful so we love you guys please make a purchase <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're kidding sort of serious <laughs> I'm not kidding <laughs> Well, that escalated quickly, I guess. Uh, that's, that's a lot of stuff. Not to mention all the stuff we already have in the garage. Plus, we're not done receiving everything yet. So, it does look like we're going to be using the shop, my workshop, as a temporary merchandise handling facility. Woohoo! <laughs> uh, it's going to be interesting for our Christmas launch because DJ has a system in the garage and all the shelves and all the racks and all of her workspace is all set up to flow. And um, it's not in here set up that way at all. So there's a good chance, you know, we could, what I'll probably do is hire a couple high school boys to come out and help me and move all of the inventory up there down here so it's all in the same spot. But I doubt we bring in all those racks and shelves. 
just for the Christmas launch because they're going to need to go. They're going to need to get moved over to the new merchandise facility. So you guys can see why we've been trying to build this facility, why that building was so important for us this year. Because uh, last year at Christmas was chaos. We barely got through in the garage with all the stuff and all the people working and everything. So anyways, I just I say all that to say, I don't want you guys to forget. We absolutely 100% appreciate every one of you that make a purchase from our website, our shirts and hats and stuff. I honestly never dreamed, you know, three years ago, four years ago, that DJ and I would ever be selling this amount of merchandise with just our name on it. It, it blows my mind. But I don't want you to forget, we're just regular people. We're just normal, everyday family, just like you guys, working to make a living. And um, we're, we're all here just working to make a living, right? Trying to trying to make a living and ours looks a little bit different than a lot of people but uh i know it seems like uh, it's hard to keep up with everything that we do honestly and i i love it i wouldn't change a thing but but don't forget this is a big risk don't get me wrong um the amount of inventory the amount of money we've put into inventory for this christmas launch i mean it'll pay off i have no doubt you guys are amazing and awesome and you've always supported us and always helped us but this it's, it's actually a stressful thing. If, if you break down the amount uh, of inventory we're going to have for this. So anyways, uh, I say all that in jest. I'm joking when I say, you know, go make a purchase. It, it, I'm joking. I mean, I trust you guys. I believe you guys. And you guys have never let us down. So anyways, I think that's going to do it for me. We're just going to leave this in the shop just like it is. There's no reason to unpack it and unload it all. DJ's going to come out here and do all of her inventory. She's got to open every box, count every shirt, and then make piles of boxes is the best I know. I don't, I don't have the greatest answer. So, yeah, should be an interesting Christmas lunch. And uh, we'll get it all out to you guys as quickly as possible. Like I said, we're looking for November 17th. All the cons should be here. All the merchandise should be here. And uh, we'll start showing you guys what everything looks like between now and then, I hope. I think DJ will probably do a lot of that. So, anyways, please, 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 don't forget about our good buddy, Cameraman Ron. I always call him Captain Ron. I probably did earlier in the video and didn't even think about it because I always call him Captain Ron. Um, but it's Cameraman Ron, Ron Middleton. Great, great, great guy, great friend of mine. And uh, he's one of those guys that if I called him, well, not today because he's in the hospital, but any other day when he's not in the hospital and he's not on the water fishing, if I called him, he would drop what he's doing in Florida and drive to Oklahoma in a heartbeat, probably without even telling anybody if I needed him. He's that kind of guy. And uh, he needs all of our prayers right now. So, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. You guys have a great day. And as always, we'll see you on the next video.